for those who don't know me, most of you all know, my name is Mahamadi Ishmael, and we will start the event with the land declaration that this Sri Lankan Manitoba Seniors Meeting is held on original lands of Anchinabi, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene people, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Thank you. So we have many invited guests today, and everybody knows, right? Like our ministers and counselors, they have many jobs to do, but I promise you they all will be here. When they are here, we will uh, introduce. Uh, now I will invite our president, Indra Ariratna, to uh, say a few words uh, to welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to inform you that Board of Directors of Sri Lankan Seniors Manitoba has decided to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude to the, those who have helped Sri Lankan Seniors Manitoba. First, I want to thank our guests for accepting our invitations. On behalf of our senior team, I would like to welcome our guests. There are people's representatives at the federal, provincial, and city levels. Executive directors, Pembina Active Living, and Association of Manitoba Senior Communities. Publisher of the Senior Scope newspaper and editor of the Lifestyle 55 newspaper. The two newspapers are monthly publications for seniors. And immediate past president of Sri Lankan Association of Manitoba, SLAM, and immediate past treasurer of SLAM. Last but not least, our photographer, videographer, and IT supporter. This event encourages us to work with all of you in our future endeavors. Thank you once again. Now I would like to introduce right, one of our guests here today, Connie Newman. Right? She is a retired teacher. Right? She, like, you know, she knows how to uh, keep me in control. Like, you know, she knows how to do that. She's also the uh, executive director of Manitoba Association of Senior Communities. Senior Communities. She has helped our seniors, Sri Lankan seniors, tremendously. And in my view, she is the, 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 the queen of seniors taking care of seniors. Yeah, yeah. Too much. Too much. And she's very passionate about socialization, lifestyle, and recreational need for seniors. And she will speak for a few minutes. Thank you, morning. This is what he does, just so we all know. I thought maybe I should have some words ready this morning. Nobody said anything to me until I walked in the door. So, off the cuff this will be. As an association, we work throughout the province. Uh, as far north as Churchill, not Churchill, Flint, Clonopah, Thompson, in the south, Morden, Winkler, etc. One of the most important things for all of us as we age, and you know what? If you're over the age of 50, you're a senior. Get used to it, that's where we're at. <laughs> the number of people who tell me I'm not a senior yet, well, the World Health Organization, the United Nations say the lifespan in Canada today is about 81, 82, and you know what? We're living longer, which is very important because we're taking care of ourselves. And if the average lifespan in Canada is 82, half of that is 41. So the moment you're over the age of 41, you're in the senior category. Get used to it. Most important. Take a picture. 
pictures in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> One of the passions we have, I have, as we age is we must, must, must stay socially connected. That means children, grandchildren, community, uh, there's a variety of ways to do that. Too many of us stay home in the four walls and don't get, get connected. Whether it's in your own cultural community, whether it's at White Ridge, whether it's with PAL, you must make connection with people. One of the things that happened through COVID, we all learned very quickly the, the value of social connection. United Nations tells us that, the World Health Organization is telling that. Now, Connie Newman is telling everybody in this room, you must stay connected. Go for a walk, say hello to somebody. There are safe communities in Winnipeg. There are safe places to be. Staying at home is not safe for your own personal health. The other comment I want to make as we age, I'm aging. I started aging the day I was born. As we hit that over 50 type, the body is wearing out. You need to get used to it. The body is wearing out. You need to get used to it. And you need to stay mobile, walk, chair exercises, whatever you need to do, you must stay mobile. And you all need to think about as you age, when you no longer drive, and maybe some of you are in that position already, how are you gonna get food? Are you living in an appropriate place for you as your body starts to give up? And so often we wait till we have a heart attack or a stroke or something, then we start planning. I'm telling you today that's too late to plan. So you need to get used to and you need to think about that. You need to help each other, you need to phone each other, and you need to stay socially connected. And if you don't know how to do that, well, you know, you've got a few people in this room that'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you for listening to me. I hope I told you something that is about it. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome. I also forgot to, I got excited. I had a couple of, Seneca gave me a big list typed. I conveniently left it at home. <laughs> so I cannot handle that. So the washrooms, if you don't know, right, you open the door, it's on your right hand side. Right? Food is served here, and uh, when time comes, we will call to have good food. We have some good fried rice, we have some chicken, we have vegetarian food, and also we have great salad. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everybody who helped us today to provide without naming, but at the same time, I will say, Upali Dasnayake, Upali Nilmalgoda, Indra, Sunimal, Rini, Udesh, Mali, Sumanaka, Syria, Sasriya, and if I miss a few others, I'm so sorry, but all of us here, Sunimal, there, right? Everybody, right? Thank you so much for the kind help. <laughs> now I would like to introduce someone I know very well. I work with her, Susan Fletcher. She is the executive director of Feminine Active Living 55 Plus. Right. Her passion is improving quality of life for seniors, and she is very passionate about participation, programming, and active living. And she does many activities in the same venue. And I would kindly ask her to say okay. a few words. Thank you, Thank Susan. You so much. Wow. Thank you so much for inviting me today. A special thank you to Seneca for sending me the invitation, but more than that, sending me a reminder because I would have showed up here on Sunday. <laughs> so I'm happy that I, I got that little call. I just want to say that it's a pleasure to work with Mohammed on our board, to work with other seniors groups of other cultures. I think it's really important that we all get to know each other that we all 
sit together, talk together, play together. I think that makes a strong senior community. Um, we started a program called uh, ESL, ESL class, conversation class for, for newcomers. Doesn't matter what your age is, we have all ages. And we had such a good turnout, there were 24 people at our wind up in June. 24 people wanting to practice English. And we have about five or six volunteers and they just sit at the table with you and say, how are you today? I'm fine, how are you? And it's very simple and it's very fun. But one day, a Ukrainian gentleman came in. Most of our classes were, were from the Chinese community, but this is a Ukrainian guy. He comes in and he says, um, is it okay if I join, I need to practice English to get a job? I was like, definitely, yes. So I asked him a few questions and he said he was all alone in Winnipeg, didn't know anyone. His family was all in uh, Ukraine waiting for him to bring them. And uh, he lived in a hotel, the government put him up in a hotel. And I was like, you know what? I have a student living with me and I take her out every weekend to see a different part of, of Manitoba, Gimli and Pine Falls and all over the place. And I said, would you be, like to join us sometime? He said, I would love that. But then I had to tell him the truth. I said, you know what? She is from Russia. <laughs> Will that be a problem? <laughs> and, he's, and he went like this for a second. And I was like, you know, I'll have you for supper. You can meet her. She, she doesn't agree with, with the war or what's happening. She told me a million people have left Russia because of it in the last, in 2022. So I had them for supper first. And I'm listening, talking, I thought, they are getting along great. So I excused myself and went and made a salad, and I could hear them laughing and talking. So for about three weeks, the Canadian took the Ukrainian and the Russian all around Manitoba, <laughs> and we had a great time. I hope that you know, you guys are welcome to join us for any programs. I hope that we can join you more often in some of your events and programs that you have as well. Let's get to be friends. Let's be pals, okay? Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, I would ask, and also we all know that we are inclusive, right? We invite all communities to participate, right? In our community, anybody who speaks Tamil is more than welcome. Anyone who speaks Singhala is more than welcome. Anyone who wants to participate with us is welcome. And now, I will call upon our past president of Sri Lankan Association. I will make sure that I tell his name properly, otherwise I'm going to be Vajira Patrana, to say a few words in our own mother tongue, in oh, Sinhalese. <laughs> <laughs> speak to us. And Vajira, thank you. I'm I took you on the And then go okay. to okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I, I know I had an uh, invitation from uh, the Sri Lanka Seniors Manitoba to come for any event. Like, it was an open invitation, and I extremely apologize for not making it, not because I didn't want to come, but as most of you know, I'm never in Winnipeg, so <laughs> I'm always somewhere. So, uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful to hear from, like, my in-laws used to come for these meetings or uh, gatherings when they were here, so I, I really, really heard extremely good things about, like, sort of fun you have, and uh, I'm, I'm eagerly waiting to get old and get join the be <laughs> 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 part of it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm almost there. So, uh, but, but I, I see who, like people who, uh, who started SLAM kind of like here, the, the, and, then, and then past presidents here, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a great group. So, Mankiana, the way Singhali Kiana, Boho Suthi, Mada Nikiwada, Ape Vadahiti Sangame, Mevagi Kutuinega, Mata Harima, Harima Sai, Mabada. 
වර්ණිගේ අම්මයි තාත්තයි ඒගොල්ලෝ හරිම ආසාවෙන් ඉන්නේ මේ ඉවෙන්ට්ස් වලට ඒගොල්ලෝ කියනවා ඒ කියන්නේ ඒගොල්ලෝ මෙහෙට එනකොට ඒගොල්ලන්ට ඒ කියන්නේ ගෙදර ඇතුලේ වෙන්නේ ඒ ඉඳර මේ කියලා නිතන් ආවේ හැබැයි ඒගොල්ලෝ හැමදාම බලන් ඉන්නවා ඒ ඉවෙන්ට් එකට එන්න ඉතින් ඒගොල්ලෝ ගොඩක් යාළු නම් කට්ටිය එක්ක තාමත් කතා කරන්න අහනවා කොහොමද වෙනවද අදත් දැන් කිව්වා මේ මම ඉවෙන්ට් එකට යන බව දන්න කවුරුරි කියලා මේ ඉතින් මම හිතන්නේ මෙහෙම එකතු වෙන එක තමයි හොඳම මොකද අපි වයසට යන්න යන්න කවුරුත් නැති වෙනවනේ මේ හැබැයි මෙහෙ හොඳ එකමුතු කට්ටියක් ඉන්නවා මේ පොඩි පොඩි ප්‍රශ්න තියෙන්න පුළුවන් මම ඔබේ හැබැයි මේ මම හිතන්නේ අපි අනිත් කමියුනිටිස් එක්ක බලද්දි මම අහන දේවල් එක්ක බලද්දි මිනිපැක් වල තාම කමියුනිටි එක හරි එකමුතුයි ඉතින් ඒක හරිම හොඳ දෙයක් මේ මම ඉතින් ගොඩක් කල් එක එක වල සම්බන්ධ වෙලා හිටියා දැන් පොඩි විශ්‍රාමයක් ගත්ත මේ සමාජ සේවයෙන් හැබැයි එහෙම කිව්වට ඕන දෙයකට මම ඉන්නවා මොන හරි ජෝක් කොට නැහැ කියන්නේ ඔකේ so pajita indirectly said he is young you know what i am younger than you <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so now i let me say a few words in my mother tongue in tamil so that in that way that everyone will understand there are very few people around here in the anbu kuriya vargale ungal anaiverayum vayodiver manitoba vayodiver sangathin sarvaga varaveetradil mikka magilchi adaikindre emadu nokkam நாங்கள் எல்லோரும் சந்தோஷமாகவும் அனைத்து சமூகங்களுடனும் சேர்ந்து வாழ்வதற்குரிய ஒரு வழியை எமது சகோதரர்கள் ஆகிய தமிழ் பேசும் சிங்கள பேசும் அனைத்து மனிதபாவால் வயோதேவர்கள் சேர்ந்து உருவாக்கிய இந்த சங்கத்திலே உங்கள் அனைவரையும் வரவேற்பதில் மிக்க மகிழ்ச்சியும் அடைகிறேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் she uh, helps us she helps us get our news to all our seniors she is part of the lifestyles newspaper dorothy dobi and she will speak to us how important the communi- communicating with all our seniors today thank you <laughs> well first of all let me say it's a An absolute delight to be here to meet all of you. I've heard so much about you, read so much about you, thanks to Seneca, uh, over the last two or three years. And so what lovely faces. And even to find an old friend from the Folk Arts Council was a great uh, sort of thing to do today, too. I was think, listening to Connie and thinking, how can I sum up what she said about advice to seniors? And I think it's simply this. Live, live, live until you die. <laughs> and the best place to live is in the garden, because you know I'm a gardener. I've already given out a little bit of gardening advice to one or two people. Susan says she's going to put a begonia on her balcony in her condo. I think maybe you could have a house plant there too soon. You know, one of those big ones that sort of flops all over. Because we need living things around us to keep us healthy and to make us feel good. And the whole thing is keep a positive attitude and, you know, be involved. Be involved. Use your minds. So when we talk about communication, then you know, read as much as you can. And I was just listening to what uh, was going on with the, with the second language and thinking, you know, you must have an advantage in having two languages. I've always been very bad at languages. Having two lang- languages keeps your mind very, very sharp. It makes you have to think harder than people who only have one like me. And uh, that's an advantage for you, so use it and enjoy it. I really, again, want to say how much I appreciate being with you today. And, keep sending me the great stuff for for life self 55 thank you so we have another guest here her name is Kelly Goodman she's for senior scope newspaper and as you all know that we get our semi monthly or monthly newspaper say like right on it of all our uh, activities on that and she will speak for few minutes thank you Kelly I have to use my loud voice. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> Kelly Goodman, I publish Senior Scope, and I am a senior for many years. I've been a senior. <laughs> and um, going on to well, 21 years old now, I've been doing uh, the Senior Scope for it. It's, it's, so, started off small. But I am also happy to publish all your stories, and Seneca has been very helpful in doing that. And uh, he is also very helpful in uh, sending my brother, Rick Goodman, who's been writing the st- humorous stories called The Virus Diaries and other stories 
throughout the years in the senior scope, I guess maybe past six or seven years. And uh, Seneca has arranged for him to go to Sri Lanka this November to on a, a media tour and to write some more stories. And hopefully he'll add a little humor in it. But it, it's very informational too. So I hope it works out. Uh, he was supposed to go a couple of years ago and uh, I think something happened and he wasn't able to go. But he, he's geared to go and he's excited about it. And uh, so thank you Seneca for arranging all that as usual. And um, what else can I tell you? <laughs> Senior Scope is, uh, offers useful and entertaining information, so I accept uh, and look forward to your stories, your community information and that of all cultures. It's great to have that in Winnipeg. That's what Winnipeg is, I think. And, um, and thank you for reading. <laughs> Short but sweet, but that's all. <laughs> thank you. So this may be a good time to acknowledge some of our founding uh, members of our association. Right? We have Mr. Peter Bastian, our past president of CNHC here with us. We have Seneca, right? We all know the man that who drives us, right? Even though he drives us crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Seneca, for everything you do. Right? That Pereira is with us. This evening, uh, this morning, still mm -hmm. morning. Right? Thank you so much, there for like coming up with the thoughts, and also like I was also part of it. So thank you so much, and uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all our members who helped us at our last event. We had a fundraising event, so we had a cricket match that youngsters were playing, and we organized the fundraising with Hopper Sales. All the right our members and also we included the uh, the youths the young ones so and they came and helped us you know say i was supposed to take cash i found a accountant there he's a young guy and there he goes right he did the entire thing right then i became a support says so really says afterwards <laughs> <laughs> and i want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all of you and also we have done many things in the past right we go as volunteer at uh, shalom mission Right, four times a year, we feed. We like to feed uh, over three, four hundred, right, uh, needy people. That you know, we fundraise and we provide funds to them. Right, we have done many presentations, right, among ourselves, security, heart stroke, and mental health, like many presentations. And I would take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all the volunteers who come and. That's those things. So we have so this cool. afternoon now, right? Janice Luke, Lucas is with us. She is the city councillor and also her worship deputy mayor, I guess. That's what I should say. And I would like to get her up here. And she is a great friend of our community. She has helped us a lot. She believes in partnerships. And she will say a few words to us. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that, thank you very much for inviting me. I apologize for being a little late here. And um, we have to leave at 1.15 because we're going to a funeral. But um, I wanted to come because I feel very close to Sri Lanka, my Sri Lanka friends here. Um, I had traveled before I had kids. I brought one of my sons here. Uh, before I got married and had children, I traveled through India and wanted to get to Sri Lanka. That was the end goal, but stopped in Goa and never left. <laughs> so, anyways, I, someday we'll go back, I guess. Um, so yes, um, what to say? Well, there's lots to say. First of all, thank you for not following protocol. Terry gets to eat, and usually Terry does all the talking, and I have nothing left to say, right? Because he said it all, so. <laughs> Hardly. Hardly. <laughs> so, um, I guess what I'd like to talk about just briefly is the work that the city's doing for older adults and what we're doing particularly in the South End. Uh, Connie Newman is here. Hello, Connie. Um, I don't know if you're speaking or not, but... Oh, I did already. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> you didn't hear it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so, so <clears throat> the city in the Southwest, what we're doing is from a activity perspective, and I'm going to speak about um, the city's responsible for recreation and movement and healthy living. We're not responsible for hospitals, we're not responsible for medical. So I've always believed
believed, and it's a fact, we know this, if we keep mobile and we keep active and we keep moving, we stay healthy. We stay healthier longer. We stay out of the beds in the hospitals. We stay out of the germs in the hospitals. So we have a lot of things going on right now. We've secured funding from the feds and the province to build two new basketball courts, one new tennis court, and a couple cricket fields in this Waverly West area. Okay, so that, that's a start. We just finished putting in the million dollar spray pad here. Oh, here's John Reyes. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> we just finished putting in the million dollar spray pad here. And now some additional upgrades to this particular community center will be trees. We're going to put in some more trees. We're going to put in benches. And my goal in the next year or two is to get this pathway built up and asphalted so that we can have it um, it, it, it's better for mobility in all seasons. What we're doing at the, White, at the Waverly Heights Community Center and the Community Center in Fort Richmond on Silverstone, we're doing upgrades like you've seen out here. We're painting, we're making the washrooms accessible. We've got a couple big goals. We want to put a, an actual gymnasium on the Silverstone Community Center because, you know, we can't have big parties in this size of room. We want basketball courts, we want pickleball courts. So that is what we're looking at doing over there. We've done a lot of planning with the volunteers and the community. We're gonna bring it forward in um, fall, September or October, which you're all gonna get an invite to, to give feedback and input. Now those are the older facilities in the Southwest. So what we're working on now, and my three buddies, two buddies here, we're the, we're the trio. <laughs> no, it's great, we're a great team, we work together. You know, we got the conservatives, we got the liberals, we got, I'll take wherever the money's coming from, I'll wear whatever color. And, um, and we've been working together on this new recreation campus which is in Bison Run. So you know where Bison Run is? You know where Superstore is? And then there's a whole bunch of development, new houses going in over there. So there's a new high school and a new elementary school. And so we together are bringing $19 million, it's all confirmed, confirmed, to build this new campus. And I think, I think Seneca, did you guys provide feedback at one point in this process? And, and um, we've gathered feedback. And now what they're doing is they're, they're, they're doing the design of it and come end of September, beginning of October, we're going to see what it looks like. So if you've ever been to the Dakota Community Center, if you've ever been there, there's a beautiful walk, it's going to be kind of like that. There's a beautiful walking track up above, there are pickleball courts, there's tennis, or pickleball, badminton, soccer. There's yoga rooms, there's other exercise rooms. That's the concept we're gonna be building over here for phase one. So we have the money for that. We're gonna do a sod turning next year. Everyone's gonna be invited, that's that. I now, in my next, we just had the election last year. Thank you very much if you voted for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Terry voted for me, that's good. I didn't good. know you did any other time, and she yeah, I did never the other time. Time. We don't talk about that. <laughs> So, but what I'm working on now, related to that community center, is the pool. The pool, because where do we have a pool here? We have the Pan Am pool, or we have Margaret Grant pool, which is probably half the size of this room, it's super small. So now I'm working on the pool, my friends, my dear friends over there. <laughs> so, so, because you know what, the pool again, it's mobility, it's movement, it's exercise classes, it's all of that, right? So I have a big focus on recreation in my next three years, three and a half years. Pathways, trails, walking, mobility. Oh, and here's another one. Fort White Alive is just over here. We've got a, a four-way cross, a four-way intersection, controlled intersection, co intersection coming with a crosswalk. And we're gonna have a bus that's gonna go down the street and into Fort White by next spring. So that is like great. Anyways, I'm excited about this, sorry. <laughs> it takes a lot of work to do all this. It seems easy, but it's just not. So, 
So I, I just um, want to thank you all for contributing so much and keeping the culture alive, keeping the kids involved. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to Folklorama to do opening remarks at Folklorama. I'll be more formal and very, you know. Uh, but, you know, John and I and Terry, we say, well, it's great Folklorama is happening, but we in our community in the Southwest, South End, live Folklorama every week because we have so many beautiful cultures and, and we are so fortunate to be able to come to an event like this, to meet the community, to have the food, kind of feel like you're in Sri Lanka. You know the parties, the big events that you throw, they're, they're incredible. And then go home and sleep in your own bed without that 12 hour flight or 14 hour flight, right? They're probably longer. But um, what you do to continue sharing your knowledge and culture with the kids and the youth yeah. is so important. So thank you very much, and thank you for being part of Winnipeg and being so welcoming always and, and kind and having great food. <laughs> thank you. I asked Janet to speak for two minutes. <laughs> she takes like three hours. <laughs> thank you so much. And she has been a great friend to us. And uh, thank you so much for all the help. Now I would like to introduce uh, Hon Honorable Terry Dugan, uh, our great friend who helps us a lot, the federal government representative who, which have provided us a fair amount of funding. And uh, on behalf of all of us, I would like to say thank you for the Horizon Grant and also keep it going. Yeah. We want a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Instead of limiting it to $25,000, Corny yeah. says we got to limit to a $50,000 minimum. Right? And, and they're working on it, and he has been so great to us. The government has been so good to us, and now I will ask you to say a few words. Well, thank, thank you, you Smith. Uh, and let's give him a round of applause for all the work he did for Pokorama for so many years, which is a, a great celebration of all of our cultures, as, as Janice was saying. You know, the, where, where we live, where we live on this planet uh, is absolutely an amazing place. We have every conceivable uh, culture. Uh, John and I were at the Fort Richmond Collegiate uh, graduation, and the kids there could trace their roots back to 70 countries, including a number of the top students who were from uh, her, whose families traced their roots back to uh, to Sri Lanka. So we are enriched by uh, by your culture, and uh, and we are enriched uh, by uh, by all of you. And so, well, thank you for uh, the invitation to be with you, and just picking up on on the theme uh, that so many have talked about. Great to see Connie. Uh, Connie kicks my but all the time, she kicks everybody's butt. Uh, but you know, the theme it, today is we need to keep seniors active and healthy, and th and that's exactly what the New Horizons for Seniors program is all about. And so, Seneca, I think we've won we won grants twice, three times, two times, two times. Okay, we're going for three. We're going for four, and and we're going for we're going for ten. We're going for ten. We 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 missed out one year and. You know what, it's all, all in the, uh, the application and making sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. And so we work with Seneca this, this next year to make sure that uh, we, uh, to use a, a North American analogy, we got the puck in the net. I don't know what the, I don't know what the cricket analogy is. I don't know what the cricket analogy uh, is, but, uh, but just, just wonderful to, uh, to, to support you, to be a friend of so many uh, in, the, in the community. And uh, also to give a, a special shout out to leaders like Peter, who I have known for almost 30 years. Uh, let's, let's hear it for Peter. And you have pioneers like Peter who came here 30, 40 years ago. Uh, there were no Sri Lankans here. There, there was no one to say Ayaboan or Vanakam <laughs> to you. And they built businesses, they raised families, and now we have a, a very sizable community who is doing so much uh, in business, the arts, uh, academia, medicine, and uh, your community has been very, very successful, and uh, that has contributed to our success, to Canada's uh, success. So I would just keep growing, uh, keep, uh, keep active, and um, Yes, and do, do call on me. I'll work with your executive to make sure that uh, 
We continue those grants uh, to, uh, to ensure that uh, you're keeping active, keeping healthy, and uh, you're making sure those, those grandchildren are keeping their language and they're keeping their culture and, uh, and making us uh, here in Winnipeg, and particularly in Winnipeg South, uh, a better place to live. I will just echo uh, last, I'm not going to speak as long as Janice. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> but um, so Janice talked about the, the community uh, recreation complex that's building in South Winnipeg. And that, that is only possible because uh, we three particularly worked very, very well together. It's over $100 million. And so yeah. that money does not come easily. There's a lot of competition from Toronto and Ottawa and Vancouver. But we were able to secure those funds because uh, we... Uh, you know, we, we put the partisanship and the parties aside and we work uh, on your behalf and on, on behalf of the entire uh, community. And I see a PAL person over there, is that correct? Yes, PAL. It's another one of our seniors organizations, so do connect with them, do work with them. You know, we are one, uh, one family here in Winnipeg South and uh, I'm so, uh, so, so blessed to represent uh, all of you and I'm so blessed to work with great colleagues like this. So, God bless you all. We have, uh, we invited two uh, provincial uh, guests, and we have right, Minister of Labor with us, Honorable John Rias. He's the MLA for Waverly, and uh, he's the Minister of Labor and Immigration. I would like to say to the government uh, the, of Manitoba Provincial Government, a big thank you for providing us the arts, culture, sports, yes. community grants. Yes. And uh, we appreciate, and uh, this is why we are able to do nice. weekly activities, monthly activities, and take care of seniors. On behalf of all of us, thank you so much, and I will invite you to say a few words. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So my mom, it was my mom's birthday yesterday. She turned 79. So seniors have a routine. And I broke that routine yesterday by inviting her to uh, get her out for lunch because she likes to do her daily walk. But I, I, I got her off routine, but she was really, really happy. I just want to say that I want to emphasize what Terry and Janice have already said. I don't know if they said the word, but teamwork. But teamwork also involves our stakeholders, and in this case, seniors. Before I move on, I just want to also recognize uh, my colleague, Mr. Bobby Khan, who's in charge of the arts, culture, sports, community grants. Um, I'm going to say that uh, my latest pamphlet, which will be out in Waverly, which I represent Bridgewater, South Point, Prairie Point, Waverly Lakes, where some of you may live. I know Seneca lives in South Point. Just under $100 million has been invested locally. I can tell you Monday, intent, it'll be over $100 million because there's going to be a positive announcement uh, for the whole province of Manitoba. And locally, I'm very proud to represent the constituency of Waverly. I am truly blessed, Janice and Terry and I are truly blessed to represent Southwest Winnipeg because as they've said, we represent many, many cultures. As a son of immigrants, I'm very cognizant of the struggles that immigrants face when they first come to Canada. And it's my job as a Minister of Immigration to sit down with the local communities on how to improve and enhance a program that created almost 25 years ago called the Provincial Nominee Program, a program that brings skilled workers from overseas. And it's so important now, these days, to bring more skilled workers because of the labor shortage that we have here in Manitoba and across the nations. We have to compete with other jurisdictions if we're going to bring skilled workers to our province. So I just want to say, I'm, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I'm, I'm conservative. We like to keep things very, very lean, oh. fiscally responsible. I don't like to be liberal and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> because I am all about action. I am all about action. And Connie knows that. Connie, I brought Connie to Waverly, along with Janice, because we, 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 are, we are going to be building a personal care home in Bridgewater. Right? 2017, we had announced that we were going, a designer was approved to build a personal care home. And it's going to be coming into fruition. I'm very, very happy about that. All the local investments that are happening in the Southwest Winnipeg. And I'm just very, very happy and delighted again to represent you all. I'm truly blessed to work with Janice and Terry. Partisanship aside, we put our political stripes aside because we want to benefit what's the most important to us. And that's you as seniors and the whole community overall. It's, a, it's an honor to represent my constituency and an honor to represent 
the province of Manitoba as the Minister of Labor and Immigration. Thank you very much. Thank you.